This videotape is titled, Basic Restroom Cleaning. Perform your duties in a safe, efficient manner. People who work in your building will easily notice restroom cleanliness. We want to create a good first impression. To help you understand the important points of this restroom cleaning program, questions will be asked during this video. Following each question, you will have five seconds to make a mental note of the right answer. Make a game of it to see how many questions you can get right. To do this, you will have to pay attention because you'll never know when a question may be asked. In only a few ways is cleaning the men's restroom different than cleaning the women's restroom. The women's restroom requires a few extra steps which are covered later in this program. A poorly serviced restroom will cause more customer complaints than any other room in the building. Not only is it bad for its visitor's health, it also tells the visitor that this restroom and possibly the whole building isn't getting the professional touch. A professionally serviced restroom is bright as a pin, fully stocked with supplies and has a clean smell. By the way, if you find anything in your restroom that is clearly lost, turn it into your supervisor. Hallmarks of professionals are honesty and integrity. We will now cover the restroom cleaning program. Step one, the first duty calls for getting ready to clean. This means your list of duties and your supplies and equipment. Check your worksheet for those restroom cleaning tasks that you'll perform on a daily basis. Also, indicated on the form will be tasks you should perform weekly, monthly, and periodically. Know your work schedule. Question one, how long does a restroom stay clean after you've cleaned it? A, six hours, B, 12 hours, C, none of these. If you answered C, none of these, you are correct. There isn't a time limit. Restrooms stay clean until the first person has used it. The more people use it, the worse it will look when you have to clean it. Restroom cleaning begins at the supply closet. Organize your car to include everything you'll need to clean all restrooms in your area of responsibility. Make sure you have a bowl swab and cup, germicidal detergent solution, non-acid bowl cleaner, multi-purpose degreaser cleaner, glass cleaner, graffiti remover, dry cleaning cloths, impervious gloves, protective eyeglasses, dust wand, squeegee, dust mop, toy broom and dustpan, wet mop, bucket ringer combo, and caution signs. Also carry on your cart expendable items used in the bathroom, plastic trash liners, liquid hand soap, toilet paper, paper towels, seat covers, and additional items on your supply list. If in doubt, ask your supervisor. You may also want to include a putty knife and gum remover. You will want to include a vacuum cleaner if the bathroom is carpeted. Now prepare your mopping solution by using one squirt of germicidal disinfectant per gallon of cool water. Squirt the concentrated germicidal disinfectant into your bucket of cool water. Make a small bucket of disinfectant solution for cleaning walls as well. Before moving out, make sure your cart is fully stocked, cleaning bottles full, mop bucket contains cleaning solution, and all equipment in working order. This precautionary step will prevent you from making unnecessary trips to the supply room. Step two calls for replacing all expendable restroom supply items. These would include towels, soap, toilet paper, and other items called for on your checklist. Make sure your cleaning cart is fully stocked with these items before you leave your cleaning closet. You'll be given a key to dispenser holders. Open the holder and replace towels as necessary. Be sure the folds are in the proper position for continuous dispensing. This means the folds must go down in order to dispense properly. Make sure you never overload dispensers. Then, make sure the dispenser cover is locked before leaving. Keep in mind that there are several types of paper towel dispensers and each one is a little different. You'll be shown correct operating procedures for the type found in your building. Now let's replace any empty toilet paper rolls. The double roll dispenser is most commonly used today. First, you'll need your key to open the holder, 
leaving the key in the lock. Now remove the rolls and replace the empty roll with a new one. Carefully place the full rolls into the dispenser, making sure they dispense from the top. Your supervisor will be happy to show you the correct loading method for single roll dispensers, leaf type dispensers, and how to service sanitary napkin dispensers. Coins removed from sanitary napkin dispensers must be turned into your supervisor. Next, make sure all soap dispensers are filled properly. Check with your supervisor for instructions on how to fill dispensers that you may not be familiar with. Step 3 calls for emptying trash, cleaning and relining waste receptacles. Of course, this means first picking up litter before removing trash. Such procedures call for daily trash removal and daily replacement of plastic liners in all restroom trash receptacles. Before placing a new liner in the receptacle, use a cleaning cloth dipped in disinfectant solution to wipe down the inside and outside of waste baskets. This eliminates nasty smells and the germs that create the smells. If the plastic liner is too wide for the waste basket, tie a knot on one side with the excess. Question 2. Toilet paper should always dispense from the top of the roll. True or false? You're right. This makes it easier for the paper to be used and presents a professional touch. Step 4. Perform high dusting. High dust in the room using a dust wand. Dust the ceiling corners, top edge of wall partitions, light fixtures, door moldings, wall deodorizer, pictures, and high ledges or shelves. Also high dust ceiling fans and returns using your dust wand or the wand brush attachment on your vacuum cleaner. Step 5 requires placing a wet floor sign outside the door, then sweeping or dust mopping the floor. Begin by putting the wet floor sign outside the door by the hinges. Using your toy broom and dustpan, sweep up floor debris or dust mop the floor. The finish on the floor and the floor type usually determine whether to sweep or dust mop the floor. Check with your supervisor. Don't lift the dust mop off the floor until the entire floor has been dusted. Make a pile in the center of the room and carefully lift your dust mop off the floor. Give it a little shake to loosen any debris that might be stuck, then return it to your service cart. Use your toy broom and dustpan to collect the litter, which you will dump into your cart's waste receptacle. Move on to step six, cleaning sinks, mirrors, and countertops. First. Remove debris from the face bowl area and countertop. Deposit debris in the cart receptacle. Using a fresh cleaning cloth with disinfectant cleaner, wipe all surfaces of the sink and counter. Start with the backsplash of the counter and work your way to the drain. Work in a pattern covering the counter and sink so that all surfaces are cleaned. The faucets and spigot need to be cleaned of germs. Now it is time to determine if both hot and cold faucets as well as the drain are in proper working order. Question 3. Which of the following items would you use to clean a porcelain sink? A. Cotton cloth and glass cleaner. B. Bowl swab and germicidal cleaner. Or C. Clean cloth and disinfectant solution. If you answered C, clean cloth and disinfectant solution, you are correct. This combination will do the best job. Finally, Dry the face bowl with a dry cotton cloth or paper towel. Don't forget to dry the counter and ledges of the sink area. Clean the mirrors next. Select a clean cloth or paper towels and spray them with glass cleaner. The best method is to start in one corner and work from right to left, moving your way down the mirror. A circular cleaning stroke does the best job. Don't climb onto the sink or counter to reach high areas. You could fall or break something. Instead, use your squeegee, wiping it dry after each stroke. Inspect the mirror for streaks and smudges. Question 4. When cleaning a restroom, which one of these things should you do first? A. Mop the floor. B. Get ready. C. Clean the sinks. The answer is B. Get ready. 
This is the first step in the 12-step restroom cleaning program. Step 7 includes spot cleaning walls and partitions and polishing all bright work. For daily housekeeping, spot cleaning vertical surfaces is all that's necessary. Earlier, you prepared a small bucket of cleaning solution containing cool water and disinfectant detergent. Use a clean cloth and this solution to clean vertical surfaces. The procedure for damp wiping vertical surfaces is to start from the bottom and wipe upward. If you start at the top, the solution will drip down the wall, streaking and sometimes staining the wall permanently. For this reason, always start at the bottom and work your way up the wall. If you see writing or graffiti on any walls or surfaces, clear it away with multi-purpose degreaser and a cleaning cloth. This chemical cleaner is harsh, so don't use the cloth for anything else, and be sure to wear gloves while using this chemical. On high wall areas, use your wall washer to clean off a dirty mark. Never stand on sinks or ledges. Clean vertical surfaces around the room in a clockwise or counterclockwise pattern. For daily spot cleaning, it might be easier to squirt the cloth with disinfectant and wipe clean only dirty areas. The major areas to look for are walls around toilets and urinals, partitions, especially tops of partitions, and walls near the sink. The restroom door and stall doors, both inside and outside, should also be spot cleaned every day. Now that all vertical surfaces are sanitized and looking great, you can begin to polish bright work and fixtures. Bright work consists of polished metal surfaces like faucets, exposed plumbing, door kick plates and wall plates, and light switch covers. Begin by spraying a fresh cleaning cloth with glass cleaner and polish all bright work. Glass cleaner is used because it evaporates quickly and doesn't leave streaks. Going around the room in a circular pattern, clean all toilet handles and plumbing. Polish the shiny metal surface of the stall door locks and trim. Polish urinal plumbing and handle, sink fixtures, and exposed plumbing fixtures beneath the sink. Wipe the door handle and push plate. This eliminates germs from being transferred from one person's hand to those of another. When it is dirty, use glass cleaner on the door push plate and kick plate. Question 5. When damp wiping vertical surfaces, what method is recommended? A. Clean from the top to the bottom. B. Spray wall and wipe clean. C. Start at the floor and clean up the wall. You're correct. C is the right answer. Always start at the bottom and clean up the wall. This method will prevent streaks and won't stain the wall. With step eight, you begin by disinfecting and cleaning commodes and urinals by flushing each, but first, wear impervious gloves and protective eyeglasses as you disinfect each commode. These protect you from germs and the chemicals you will be using to clean. Apply some non-acid bowl cleaner to the bowl swab for maximum concentration. It does a better job of cleaning under the rim. It should be pointed out that urinals are cleaned in the same manner as commodes. Firmly scrub under rims with this application of fully concentrated cleaner on the bowl swab. This technique will remove odor causing bacteria and will keep flush ports clear. A sparkling under rim is the hallmark of a professionally clean toilet bowl. Now with your bowl swab, force water out of the bowl by using it as a plunger, like this. Then clean the water trap thoroughly with firm pressure along all contours of the trap and inner surfaces of the bowl. Do not flush yet. Tap the swab handle against the toilet rim to drain excess water and remove the swab from the toilet bowl using a swab cup or folded cloth under the swab to prevent drips which may stain the floor or carpeting. Question 6. Which of the following supplies would you need to clean a restroom? A. Bowl cleaner. B germicidal detergent, C, impervious gloves, or D, all of these? If you answered D, all of these, you were correct. While cleaning the restroom, should you encounter blood or body fluids like urine or feces, you must follow standard precautions. 
OSHA requires standard precautions to be followed wherever there is a risk of transmitting bloodborne pathogens or pathogens from moist body substances. Building service personnel are required to use appropriate barrier equipment to prevent bloodborne pathogen transmission. Examples of barrier equipment would be protective gloves and goggles, and in some cases, a mask and gown. Now it is time for step nine, cleaning the commode. You begin by using disinfectant solution on a clean cloth. Wipe clean all outer surfaces of the toilet bowl down to the floor. The most efficient method for cleaning the toilet seat area is to wipe the top of the seat cover, lift the seat cover, wipe clean the underside and top of the toilet seat, then lift the toilet seat. Wipe the underside and bowl rim top clean. One of the hallmarks of the professional is wiping the top back of the toilet bowl. Then you wipe the sides of the toilet bowl as well as the back and front all the way down to the floor. Rinse the cloth in disinfectant and wipe the flush handle and exposed plumbing, then flush the urinal. Also, spot clean the wall areas directly around the unit. When finished, pour the disinfectant solution into the toilet and flush it. This signals to the next person who uses the restroom that this area has recently been cleaned. Question 7. When using a bowl swab, the bowl cleaner should be poured directly into the commode bowl. True or false? If you answered false, you were correct. The bowl cleaner should always be applied directly to the swab. This way the bowl cleaner will be at full strength when it is used and prevents a waste of bowl cleaner. The tenth step finds you wet mopping the floor. Never attempt to mop unless you have first cleared the floor of litter. Pick up and dispose in cart waste receptacle any litter from cleaning. Use your toy broom and dustpan if necessary. Question 8. How often should you replace plastic liners in waste baskets? A. Daily. B. Weekly. C. Monthly. D. None of these. If you answer D, none of these, you are correct. Plastic liners in restrooms are replaced every time the restroom is clean throughout the day. Sometimes you'll find gum stuck to the floor. Use your putty knife and gum remover to remove this sticky problem. Mop all floor areas in the restroom, including underneath commodes and urinals. Odors are also caused in restrooms by poor floor procedures. This won't happen in your routine because we use professional methods. When mopping the floor, you should try not to splash solution on baseboards. If you see any splash marks after your mopping operation, be sure to wipe them up so they don't dry dirty. Does the restroom you're cleaning smell bad? If it does, the source of the smelly odor could be the floor drain. Pour a gallon of diluted disinfectant detergent into the floor drain. Do this about once a month to ensure against the water trap drying out and allowing sewer gas to enter the restroom. Sewer gas smells real bad, and with the solution in the drain, you will eliminate the odor completely. Question 9. Restroom odors can often be traced to dried out floor drains. True or false? That's right, this is true. That's why you should always empty a gallon of dilute disinfected detergent into all restroom floor drains once a month. The eleventh step and final step is for you to inspect your work and take one final look around the restroom that you just cleaned. Remember, it's important that you find any errors and correct them before you move on to your next assigned area. When you successfully complete your 11-step restroom cleaning program, return your supply cart to the closet. Wipe out buckets, refill bottles, and order cleaning chemicals and supplies you're running low on. In short, be prepared and have everything ready for the next shift. Place wet mop head in a plastic bag and place it where it will reach the laundry for being cleaned before being used again. Or flush and clean all mops in the janitorial sink. Ring dry and place in a laundry bag for laundering. You can tell a book by its cover when it comes to the supply closet. Keep your supply closet in apple pie order. Now, let's review our 11-step cleaning program for restrooms. The first step calls for you to get ready to clean. Make sure you have the proper supplies and equipment. The second step calls for restocking all expendable supplies, paper towels, toilet paper, soap. Check your list. The third step calls for emptying trash, cleaning and relining all waste receptacles. 
The fourth step calls for performing high dusting. The fifth step is for sweeping or dusting the floor and placing wet floor signs. The sixth step means cleaning the sinks, mirrors, and countertops. The seventh step finds you spot cleaning walls, cleaning partitions, and polishing all bright work. Step eight calls for you to apply disinfectant into and around the rim of the toilet bowls and urinals, providing dwell time for the germicide to work. The ninth step means you clean the commodes, disinfect the commodes and urinals inside and out. The tenth step finds you wet mopping the floor. The eleventh and final step indicates that you inspect your work and correct any errors or omissions you find. Question 10. You wear goggles and protective gloves to protect your hands from harsh chemicals and to protect yourself from others' bodily fluids, following the guidelines for standard precautions. True or false? Yes, the correct answer is true. You wear goggles and protective gloves to both protect yourself from harsh chemicals and to protect yourself from others' bodily fluids following the guidelines for standard precautions. Remember, your work will be checked by your unit manager as well as your area supervisor and ultimately your customers. Do a good job and we'll all get good reports. You will ensure that restrooms, like this one, can be used confidently every day. Remember, the entire building and its cleaning service can be judged by the condition of its restrooms. We know that you will do a good job. You have now completed this presentation on basic restroom cleaning. Please contact your training supervisor. Thank you.